Welcome to our service this morning. It's really good to have you watching. I always think of you as I, as I record the service every week. Um, and, I, and I do hope that you are able to really join in and feel part of the family here at St. Luke's as you, as you watch this service. It is of course today is the 1st of November, it's All Saints Day, and um, we are also having um, a, another service today, um, which hopefully you'll be able to watch as well. But let's begin today, let's begin our worship today by listening to a hymn from Ricky. Jesus is King and I will extol Him, give Him the glory and honour His name. He reigns on high and throned in the heavens, word of the Father exalted for us. We touching the throne. We have a priest who is there interceding, pouring his grace on our lives day by day. We come to him, our priest and apostle, clothed in his glory and bear Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's pray our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We come before God in a time of confession, a time to recall the things that we want to say sorry to God for. Thinking about those things that we don't want to do again. Asking for his strength to turn away from those sins. We do it because God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. And we're truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ricky will lead us in the Gloria. We 
worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive. Let's pray our collect prayer for today. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we have one reading today. And uh, thank you to Jane as she leads us in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the Holy Spirit open our hearts and open our lips that we may carry the word of God to one another. When somebody blesses you, it seems like a simple phrase, but we never stop to think about what it really means. We sneeze and someone says, bless you. But it's really quite a powerful phrase. May God bless you. And we say it, if we say it with our heart, with our whole heart, it is powerful. What would it be like if God blessed us to the full? 
And the answer is given in the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus made eight statements, each beginning with, Blessed are. And we call these eight sayings the Beatitudes, from the Latin word beati, meaning blessed. Jesus shows that God will bless those who show these characteristics in their life. These are not laws, but they describe the characteristics that God wants us to show in our lives. If you ask most people what would make them happy, they would say to be wealthy, healthy, successful, popular, and in many cases, to be famous. But these are transient pleasures. And Jesus startles us into looking at things differently. He says that what produces inner happiness is to be poor, humble, grieving, hungry, forgiving, pure, and peacemakers. Most astonishing of all, to be persecuted. Quite the opposite of what we would expect. So, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Poor in spirit doesn't mean spiritually deficient. It means having the same attitude that poor people have. The poor are grateful for what they are given. Being humble and aware of their dependence on God. We should be like that, even if we are comparatively wealthy, says Jesus. Then we shall receive the kingdom of heaven. Probably here, Jesus was speaking of the afterlife. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. If Jesus was speaking about the afterlife, those who mourn for the departed loved ones can be comforted by the certainty that they are with Jesus out of pain and we shall see them again when we die. In person, not as a ghost, but with a new imperishable body as Jesus showed in his resurrection. But Jesus was probably referring to those who grieve over the terrible state of the world and COVID-19. They are more blessed than those who ignore it and through their concern and prayers, things will slowly get better. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Meek means humble, not pushy, not always demanding to have our own way. The world teaches us that we have to be pushy to get what we want. But Jesus teaches us something different. They shall inherit the earth is a quotation from Psalm 37. Many Jews interpret this as the land, meaning the holy land, but God isn't interested in land grabs. He promises for those, for those who are humble, the whole world will be theirs to enjoy. And then we have, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Righteousness is good behaviour. In ourselves, justice for others, and victory for God's kingdom of love. We should long for these things as a starving man longs for food. Julian of Norwich, a saint of the Middle Ages, asked God for three wounds, compassion, contrition, and longing sorrow for her sins and longing for God. And that surely teaches us something. We need to be a bit like that, but that takes a lot of prayer and discipline. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
If we are kind and forgiving to others, God will forgive us. And Jesus explained this in the parable of the unforgiving servant and in the Lord's Prayer. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Our heart is the centre of our being, the seat of our will and our personality. Pure in heart means avoiding impure thoughts, but it also means single-mindedness, disciplining ourselves not to be selfish and mean-hearted, but to be generous like our Father in heaven and following the example of the saints. So we come to blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peacemakers resemble God our Father, who is always trying to bring reconciliation between his children. There are many peacemaking organisations in the world, but we hear little of them. The Palestinian Peace and Resolution Centre comes to mind. And there are many peacemakers in Israel, but we hear very little of them too. And in the Second World War, there were resistance movements in Germany of Germans working undercover so quietly but resolutely. And we need to follow the example of some of these unrecognised saints. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, should we be happy then when people persecute us, mock us, oppose us, and make life difficult for us? Because that's how they treated the prophets, and that's how they treated Jesus. So we would be in good company. Like Jesus, if we accept persecution without complaining, we may win our persecutors to be ashamed and even ask God for forgiveness. And many of the saints we commemorate today were persecuted and killed for their beliefs. I pray that none of us may suffer as they did, but in every other respect, may we be like the saints in imitating these beatitudes. So we can ask God to help us, and we're not perfect people, and we fall short. But God is not only in church, but everywhere, so we can continually be in touch with him, and he is forgiving. And he will strengthen us. He is especially present in God's house, the church. When you feel this in church, we are especially close to those who have died. That is why church going is such a comfort to the bereaved. The long list of famous Christians that you have read about are also with Jesus, so they too are close to us when we are in church. And a host, a host of angels Two, all supporting us. In the gaps, in the pews, there could be angels sitting. Just think of that. We call the fact that the saints are with us the communion of saints, and we are never really alone. Eastern Orthodox Christians fill their churches with icons and pictures of saints, and they're not just visual aids, but windows to eternity, reminding us of the great crowd of saints always present with us. For the church is God's family, the communion of all the saints in heaven and earth is our family life. So we need to be here and take comfort from it and remember that those we cannot see are always with us. 
So let's pray. Father God, may we be continually aware of your presence in our lives and may we strive to follow Jesus in the Beatitudes. Father, you have gathered into your keeping and celebration the saints of the church and through the ages and from every nation. No one is lost and every one of them lights up the halls of heaven with their beauty and their faithfulness. Thank you for the brightness of their witness to you and their inspiration to us. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you, Leslie. We're now going to say the creed together, if you can. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I'm going to hand over now to Carol for our intercessions. The responses today to Holy Spirit hear us is come into our hearts. And towards the end of the prayer I'll be repeating the Beatitudes Please join in at the end of each line with Amen. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come into our hearts. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray that love will conquer all, that all of your children will know what it is to love and be loved, that they will all know of your incomparable and never-ending love for them. Bring the joy of true love into the hearts of all people, enough to overwhelm the desire for material wealth, power and control over others, self-righteousness, idleness and dishonesty. All of us here have been guilty at times of being self-righteous, of being greedy, of being impatient, of resentment and pride. 
It is not easy to be humble in a world that values self-conceit, personal wealth and achievements so highly. We pray, Lord, that we can overcome these temptations and demonstrate to all we meet the fruits of the Spirit and true love in all its forms. Holy Spirit, hear us. Come into our hearts. Creator God, we pray for those who represent us in government and those who lead your church, both at home and throughout the world, still struggling in the ongoing pandemic and with the complexities of modern politics. May they be men and women of integrity, guided by a desire for public service and a love of the truth. We ask that they also be just and compassionate, so that all peoples may be led in the ways of righteousness and mercy. We thank you for the blessing of our leaders here at St Luke's, for all they give and strive to achieve. Continue to guide and strengthen them in all your ways. We pray for our planet and everyone fighting to save it. May we all wake up to the damage we are doing and take our individual and collective responsibilities towards this, your creation, seriously. May the global companies, organisations and governments that control so much of the way we live be alert to the changes that are needed and make them happen ethically sustainably and economically. We thank you for all those seeking and developing more eco-friendly products and services. Holy Spirit hear us, come into our hearts. Lord God, we remember now those we love who are sick, who are struggling, those who are bereaved and those we have lost. We call to mind the refugees and asylum seekers who continue to lose their lives in their bid for freedom and those suffering at the hands of religious and political extremists. May your love and our love for them, sustain and comfort them. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. For Jesus tells us, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Amen. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen. Amen. I'm going to share the peace now with one another. I say we are the body of Christ. In one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. So let us then renew all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share a side of the peace with one another. Peace be with you. 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 Peace.
be with you. Peace 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 be with you. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. your living word, through whom you have created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and he revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. So send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Luke and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So I pray draw near with faith, and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith and with thanksgiving. The body of Christ was broken for you. And the blood of Christ was shed for you. And we pray our post communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, I have a couple of notices for you. One of them is, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, that um, today also we have um, our All Souls Memorial Service. So what I'm also recording for you is a version of that service too. I didn't think it would be appropriate to record that service live at all, 
um, because of the sensitivity of it. So I hope that if it appeals to you, if it's something that you would like to do to join in with our memorial service, then please do um, click on that link as well. Be good to have you with us. Next week, of course, is our remembrance service. And we only have one service um, next week, which is our remembrance service, and it starts at 10.30. So, I am going to try and record it. It does mean that just for, for next Sunday, um, the, the YouTube clip won't be there first thing in the morning, because we're gonna have to wait for the Remembrance Day service to have happened. Then I have to edit it, then I have to download it, which actually takes, the downloading can take hours, um, just as it's coming down from the camera, then uploading um, onto YouTube. So um, it will be there, but it will be later in the day. So we look forward to that. And so I finish by saying, the Lord be with you. And the peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.